All right, so today we had a pretty easy day. We started off with just looking at some different questions about group discussions and just seeing what you guys know, just so I can see how much I need to teach you before uh, final exams related to professional business communication. Um, and after we looked at some questions, we worked on your resume. That is due today, uh, April the 28th. So make sure you guys do your resume today, type it in Google Docs, or if you've got Microsoft Office Word, you can type it in Word. But remember your resumes are due today. So I need you guys to go ahead and get started on those. That way I can see them and we can play with them and I can look at them and I can tell you what's wrong with them, what to keep, what to get rid of. And that way you can have a nice working resume before you leave Ms. McDonald's Principles of Business class. All right, so let's rock and roll. All right, so for those questions, so let's start off at the top. Number one, a group is a number of people who do what? Do they feel the same about an issue? Do they get together to do something? Do they come up with different answers or do they enjoy each other's company? So a group of people is just some folks that get together to do something. All right, what does a group's leader do? Do they take a meeting's minutes? Do they make sure that the group members agree? Do they put the group in a certain on a certain course or do they follow up with everybody? A leader puts a certain group into a certain course. So they say, okay, you do this, you do that, you do this. Number three, a good example of a casually operated group is a, a few friends talking about a football game, um, a few players tossing a football during practice, a football team running laps around the field, a football team selecting a strategy or a play. So a casually operated group would just be talking about football. All right, the last one at the bottom, how group members interact usually depends on what? Who's the oldest? Who asked the first question? Who's the most outgoing or who knows the most? That would be who knows the most. Normally people that know the most are gonna go ahead and, and talk and get that stuff out there and then it'll lead the group into their discussion. All right, number five, which of the following is not a reason to participate in a discussion? So if you're talking about a professional discussion, what would you not want to do? Do you not want to gain confidence? Do you not want to think critically? Do you not want to organize your thoughts? Or do you not want to declare your opinion? You do not want to declare your opinion in a group discussion. This is all about what you know, not what you think that you know. All right, this one at the bottom. When Steve asks questions in an open-minded way, he's avoiding what? So if he's being open-minded, what is he avoiding? said in his own opinion, attacking someone else's, opi uh, someone else's idea, suggesting a better way to do something, or mentioning the truth. So if you're being open-minded, you're avoiding attacking somebody else's ideas. So if somebody's talking and you're being open-minded and they said that they're Muslim, if you don't agree, that doesn't matter. So when you're being open-minded, you're avoiding attacking somebody else based on their beliefs and their ideas. All right, at the top, once you know your group's purpose, what should you do next? Find out, you know, what people know about the subject, agree on the rules, volunteer a new idea, or contribute in a new useful way. You want to establish the ground rules. So what is our purpose? All right, now we know our purpose. Now, okay, who's going to do what? Who's responsible for who? Who's going to report to who? So you're going to establish some ground rules. Here at the bottom, what type of communication style is usually appropriate for evaluating or counseling interviews with employees? Ooh, a counseling interview or evaluating somebody at your work. That's formal. That's a formal type of communication. All right, while researching information for a business report, Tara reads the following statement in an online newspaper article. Although unemployment has dropped slightly over the past few months, many politicians have indicated that they believe the government has done enough to get our country out of this recession. This is an example of information that contains what? Historical facts, criticism, statistics, or poll data. That will be criticism. So they're saying, although unemployment has dropped, many politicians have indicated that they believe, that they believe they're criticizing that the government has done enough to get our country out of the recession. So they're not basing it on facts, they're not basing it on statistics, they're criticizing what the government has done in a positive way. Criticism can be good or bad. All right, in order to be understood on the phone, a business's employee should always do what? They should always enunciate clearly. 
So instead of slurring your words and using slang and jargon, you want to enunciate, speak clearly. Which is not a tool that people use when participating in discussions. So which one is not what you need to do when you're in a discussion at work? You don't want to share your personal experience. So nobody cares at work what you think, what your family's doing. They want to get down to the nitty gritty and talk about business. So don't share your personal experiences at work. They take the group off task. Individuals who are able to defend their ideas objectively. So being objective, you're providing others with evidence, with logical evidence, with the truth. So if you're being objective, that's like an attorney or a, a judge and you're basing your opinions or excuse me, you're basing your ideas based on facts. All calls coming to a business should be should end as pleasantly as possible in order to do what? You want to leave a very good lasting impression with your customers. When Dawn answered the front desk telephone at her property, a female caller who sounded very upset said, my daughter Susan Smith is staying at your hotel and I need to reach her please immediately because of a family emergency. Would you please give me her room number? So Dawn quickly answered, Miss Smith, she is in room 224. I will connect you. So what did Dawn do wrong? She gave out the, the, the guest room number. You can't do that. That's private information. To be able to explain and defend your ideas objectively to others, individuals, you need to have which type of effective skills. So if you're explaining yourself, you need verbal skills. Why is it often important to take notes during meetings or presentations? The information will be needed later, just like for a test. The primary reason customers give for not returning to a business is a lack of what? Somebody being nice. So somebody was rude, they weren't courteous. The primary reason the business benefits when salespersons practice good customer relations is that it causes your customers to come back. It develops repeat customers. Your customers come back when they've got a good experience with you sales folks. When businesses need to formalize the information provided to employees, customers, or other businesses, they often use what type of communication? So being formal, they're gonna write it down. In a letter, in an email, they're gonna write it. It is easier for employees to develop positive customer or client relations if employees understand that each customer is unique. I want something different than you do, so if a business understands that I'm a unique individual, they can better serve me. An important problem-solving skill for individuals to have is the ability to be objective, to be able to see the facts, not somebody's opinions, but be able to see the facts and make a logical decision. Several employees are faced with the possibility of being laid off work. By concluding that they should look for new jobs, before that happens, what are they doing? They're just solving problems. They're saying, oh, shoot, we got a problem. We need to figure out what we need to do. Because a business spends a lot of money to purchase and maintain office equipment, it expects its employees to do what? It expects its employees to use the equipment with care. That's why they train you, to show you how to use it so you can be safe. Most businesses expect their employees to show an interest in the company by being what? So if you show an interest in a company, businesses are looking for you to be cooperative. And that's what we reviewed today. So we also remember we did our resume. Hopefully you guys have finished that in class and you could submit it on Canvas today because it is for a grade. We're closing out this semester, so make sure you guys are catching up on work and I'll see you tomorrow.